welcome into the CHGO Bears podcast on this Tuesday in Chicago. A little bit of a smaller crowd today. It is just me, Adam Hogue, <laughs> and my friend Mark Carmen, who I've been destroying in sports arguments all morning here at CHGO. It's been a great morning. I feel great. I literally, from the second that I walked in here today, I got dumber. I. I <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. I was here for five seconds, and you guys were the. What's the greatest trade of all time in the history of Chicago? And I started with Sammy Sosa. Uh, but that that would be both the best and worst, then. Right. Well, uh, it like cancels I mean, each other out. I'm like, if you're just talking about the Cubs, I would say Sammy, and then it turned into this whole Arietta slash the Bears trade. Of the yeah. number one pick that we'll talk about on Tavern Style that we don't need to do say, on this yeah. show. But I really, I think I did become dumber. Uh, Braggs uh, very accurately says that that's not possible. In Which the, part is not possible? The You getting dumber. Oh, that's funny yeah. by Gregory. Yeah. <laughs> Gregory. <laughs> it is weird, though, how we can just sit here and have nice sports arguments this morning without you two just yelling at each other about pants and I don't accept my 50% things. in that in that in that are you don't 49 no, no it's his it's his fault entirely I oh. get a, he gets 100% of the blame that's wrong all right well that is a little tease for you because we did argue the Bears trade versus the Jake Arietta trade that's on tavern style which is not out yet it will be probably in a couple hours or so uh, on the CHGO YouTube channel of course um, where we informed Cole Komet that's where things go Yesterday on the show, if you missed it, Cole Komet, awesome interview. Um, check it out. Shout out to Get Up on ESPN for using some of that this morning. Thank you to our friends at Get Up. I knew they were always a huge fan of the show, and we're a huge fan of Get Up. And anytime they want to take our content and, and put it out there for us, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, this is part of the reason why we just hit 52,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're not done yet, of course. Keep hitting that subscribe button. Do it for Cole Komet because he told you to. We'll be uh, here's another reason. If you're just tuning in for the first time for some reason, tomorrow we are going to have live coverage from Caleb Williams Pro Day. Uh, both myself and Nicholas Moriano will be there in Los Angeles tomorrow for the pro day. So um, if you want to see Caleb in action, some video, make sure to also follow us on Twitter at CHGO underscore Bears. We'll be posting some videos, of course. He's expected to talk to the media. Um, and we're going to – tomorrow's show will be delayed a little bit because we want to make sure we bring you the best coverage from the pro day. So I we're, we're, we're going to have to be a little fluid on this one, but we're thinking – 2 p.m. Central is probably when the show will start. It might be pushed back just a little bit if Caleb gets pushed back. But Carm Braggs will be here in studio while Nick and I are in L.A. It should be a great show. So please hit subscribe. You're ready for it. Are you flying first class out there, Manchin? How are you doing? Yeah, I have not gotten the upgrade notification. Are you leaving today? That's how these things work? Um, yes, I am flying across the country today, not tomorrow morning. Five star tonight. Where are we going? We got we got a Beverly Hills no, Hilton. We got like a four points by Sheridan. Four points by quick, Sheridan. Quick eight hour sleep situation uh, before I leave. Uh, it's a quick trip. I, I am uh, very excited for your experience tomorrow, and I and I am looking at how fluid life is right now. Well, I got to get back tomorrow because we're we got a show at nine thirty in Waukegan on Thursday. Come out to that too. We're gonna be at Circa. Nick's leaving and, tomorrow morning, by the way. Yeah, well, Nick apparently controls American Airlines and can get a private jet to take him there in the morning. Nick's American Airlines. Nick, something special in the air. Please stop. <laughs> I, Don't you love airline jingles? There's nothing better than an airline jingle. Name one. United, Fly in the Friendly Skies. Okay, Come on, fine. man. Okay. Delta, we love to fly in at shows. What I type? Of I don't know that one. United, I'll get you. It's a Chicago company. We're, <laughs> I mean, we're all we're down with that. Anyway, uh, live show and a watch party going on Thursday. Circus Sports in Waukegan. Our show will be live at nine thirty. That's going to be followed by a college hoops show, and then of course we're going to be hanging out watching the best thing to watch all year, which is just live basketball all day as the tournament gets underway. So we're excited about that. Come out and see us. Uh, and then, of course, we got the draft party, our next big – I don't even know if that's our – even that's our next big event. We, but we got a ton of events coming up. Yeah, we got uh, – isn't there a Hawks – There's a Hawks watch takeover party. Takeover next week? That's sold out, I believe. I think it's the end of the month, but, yeah. It's, it's, that's next it's week, coming dude. up. It, oh, man, you're right. <laughs> the end of the <laughs> month is next week. 
Two, two tickets, tickets left two tickets. to the hall. So I was going to go to that, but I, I'm I'm going to be in at the owners' meetings next week. So uh, what's up, Charlie, the bacon guy? We see you. Two tickets left for the Hawks watch party next week. Go to the CHO, allchgo.com slash events, and you can pick up those last two tickets. Uh, we got new diehards to shout out later in the show as well. Yes. Shout out to Jason Brown. Where's the spirit jingle? Yeah. Car? That's my guy. That is <laughs> Spirit Airlines. Pay us now and again, and we'll get you there maybe. I love Spirit Airlines. Do you think that we ended up on ESPN this morning because of Cole Komet or because of Bragg's sweatpants that he was wearing? I just thought it was horrifying that on our we finally make get up and the first thing they see is a spread leg Greg Braggs in sweatpants. I don't I mean, think they have an ESPN after dark yet. I mean, that by is, the way, you're giving Greg way too much credit for what you suggest is showing there. I mean, I just saw sweatpants. Oh, okay. Well, I, I just it was a vile look, and I don't think they're ever going to use this again because somebody in upper management probably looked like who is that guy in the in the third chair looking like he's auditioning for adult entertainment. I, I, I that's, that wasn't that's not a good look for us. We might have to re, re, reconvene. Uh, but right. yes, thanks again to get up. So uh, a couple nope. things we're going to talk about on the show today, and uh, now that we can kind of turn the page to Kayla Williams and um, kind of set things up for tomorrow's pro day. Um, seeing this conversation going on around a little bit and wanting to chime in on it and like basically what is what would be considered realistic expectations for Caleb Williams as a rookie. Um, there was some stadium news that came out last night uh, that I told you would be coming about a week ago. And uh, Carm didn't want to believe me. He just wanted to have a victory party. So we'll discuss the new stadium developments. I'll wait for my hot take on that. To come up later in the show, but I look, I greatly look forward to that part of the show coming up. Thank you. And then, of course, Super Chats towards the end. So let's talk about Caleb Williams here a little bit. And I like to have these conversations in terms of floor and ceilings because there are no absolutes. We get it. There's no guarantee Caleb Williams is going to be everything that, you know, I'll just raise my hand, that I've said he'll be. That being said, because um, weirdly this seems to be the new uh, – I don't know, coping mechanism on Twitter or whatever. People are already coming after me, uh, lowering expectations now that they're... I'm not lowering anything. I'm a, I, want, I want to be perfectly clear about that. I have been consistent on this since December, maybe November. I don't even remember when we first had this conversation. But I believe the floor... Well, let's, let's set it up like this. Here's my floor for Caleb Williams as a rookie, okay? And then we're going to talk about the ceiling. But in terms of passing yards, and there's a reason why these numbers are up here under floor, 2,562 passing yards because that's Justin Fields' career high. 17 touchdowns because that's Justin Fields' career high. Um, and 11 interceptions because that was Justin Fields' um, – that's actually Justin Fields' worst. Um, I think I meant to actually put nine in there, so I'll take the blame for that one. But that being said – for C, um, oh, I think I raised it. That's what I did. It Justin Fields, to be fair, uh, his best is nine, but I'm actually saying that Caleb could do a little bit worse than that because I think the volume of how much they throw will be a little bit more. Anyway, the point is, I have said from the start, I really do believe that Caleb Williams' floor is what Justin Fields was. And I've said it a thousand times, that is not to take any shots at Justin Fields. That's how good I think Caleb Williams would be. And part of the reason why I was making the argument for them to do what they're doing, because I think the worst case scenario is they'll have the guy they already had without the top end speed, obviously, as a rusher. But that's part of why you make this move. You reset the quarterback clock and you have worst case scenario, similar production. By the way, guys, that's not, I mean, for a floor, when you actually just put the numbers out there, if I just put that out there and not said Justin Fields' name at all, people probably would have said that's too low. Mm -hmm. But again, we're just talking floor. If we can go pull the graphic back up, though, and look at ceiling, um, I'm going much higher than that. However, lower than you, I will say. Um, passing yards, I'm putting... I probably should have said 3,999 because as high as I am on Caleb Williams, I am understanding that this is the Bears. And if the first ever 4,000-yard passer in the franchise's history ends up being done by a rookie, that's 
basically best case scenario. But we are saying ceiling. So absolute ceiling, I'll put it up there. 23 touchdowns. Why 23? That's how many Andrew Luck had in his rookie season. Interceptions, Andrew Luck actually had more. Um, I'm bringing that number down to eight. C.J. Stroud, for the record, had five last year. I think that's a little unrealistic. Again, these are floors and these are ceilings. So it's probably going to end up being somewhere in the middle of all that. But that's where I'm at. I'm not lowering shit, guys. I think you guys. I think Caleb Williams is going to be legitimate. I've been saying that, and just because we're moving on here, I'm not lowering anything. I just, but I will say and have said all along, Carm, that rookie quarterbacks struggle. No matter who they are. Go look at Andrew Luck's numbers, which have come up. You brought him up as a, as a passing yard goal. Yeah. He had uh, 18 interceptions. 23 his, touchdowns, 18 interceptions. His, yes. passing, his passer rating was in the 70s. Like, his, it wasn't that outstanding of a year other than... His completion percentage was 54%. Exactly. So, like, th that's a rookie season. That's also a different NFL going all the way back to 2012. Sure. So, I'll throw that in there. Uh, keep going. Or, or is it my turn? Um. Chris says compete for rookie of the year. I did mention that on yesterday's show. I also believe this isn't necessarily a floor ceiling, but I, I, it's a little disappointing if he's not at least in the conversation. But quarterbacks don't always win rookie of the year. We can go through some of that later if we want. I mean, they well, do sometimes, but it's not a given every year. It's not like the MVP where it just automatically goes to a quarterback. Well, if we're talking awards then and ceilings, then that would be win rookie of the year. For ceiling, yes. Yes. But I guess my floor would be... Still Competes. in the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't do any awards, and uh, this is a, obviously a challenging exercise. But I, you know, I looked, I looked at the top year for a rookie quarterback, and that was Andrew Luck, and he averaged 273 yards a game. So what I did was do that times it out by 17. There is one more game in the NFL right now at a yard that he's beating him, and that's where I got my ceiling in yards at 4,642. One yard better, uh, basically the same average. So 273 a game, which, by the way, C.J. Stroud also had 273 yards a game last year, only played 15 games. So that would get, if he had played all 17, he would have gotten to the 46-42. So that's my ceiling there. My floor is 200 a game. I think that the guy, uh, should average 200 yards per game. That's not a ton, um, even though that's still like 900 more yards than Justin. I got through. it. I got it. But I I'm, mean, I, I'm taking Justin out of this. I'm just looking at what I think of a floor for a number one overall pick who's supposed to be a generational talent with Keenan Allen, with DJ Moore, with Cole Komet, with DeAndre Swift, with whoever else they're going to add. 200 a game. That I like that. That. <laughs> Where's the 26 interceptions coming from? Because I, you, you were talking about floors. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's that's not even two a game. Oh, it's 1.5 a game. Two a game is horrible, though. Yeah. I understand. He's not allowed, can he throw? Is he allowed to throw one pick a game as a rookie? I would like to. See, that's what I'm. Sure, uh, but you said 26. Yeah, so 1.5. You're talking about the floor. Okay. I mean, I'm a worst case scenario for interceptions. That's got me thinking my brain's going down the road and I. I'm doing it ready, but like, worst where would 26 interceptions rank? I, I'd have to look it yeah, up. Like, I, I, honestly, I don't know, but that's not, it's not 1.5 a game. I'm not, I don't think that's unreal. I'm look, like, are we going to let the guy play? We, this I, is my well, I'm, just, I'm just saying your floor, your floor is, honestly, your floor is they throw the ball a ton. Yeah. Because he's getting 3,600 yards. 30, 200 yards. 200 a game. 3,400. 3,400. Sorry. Yeah. 3,400 yards. That's not that much. 17 touchdowns. One a game. And 1.5 yeah. interceptions. <laughs> okay. You're asking for a floor on how many picks he's going to throw. Now, they'll probably... Listen. Memo to the Bears. I get it. You want to win next year. There's a lot of pressure on jobs. Being super conservative with Caleb Williams, drafting him number one overall to try to squeeze out as many wins as you can get in, in year one, to me, now we're getting ahead of the conversation, that would be the wrong way to go about it. No. Let the dude play. Let him learn. Let him throw the football. I'm not saying you throw it 40 times in week one, but you know, running it more than you're throwing it to try and win games, that should not be their plan. I get it. There's a, he's not the only one in the locker room, but he is a rookie quarterback. They're trying to develop to get to a point where you can win the Super Bowl. So, hey, 
Um, Sam Howell led the league in interceptions last year with 21, according to Nick. Hey, listen. That's why I was thinking, like, I'm thinking, like, 26 interceptions would have to lead the league. Yeah, that's right. Let him. Okay. Uh, you're talking just, about the worst case scenario. Let him run around. Let him learn. No, that's let him fine. Do, let him do the crazy things. Listen. Um, it, look, it, it's it. My interception total might have been too low for worst case scenario. You're, I, you are 26 seems a little high. I, I think that part of where my numbers were coming from, though, is because I'm not convinced they're going to throw the ball a ton. I'm not, convinced, they have I'm not convinced they are either. I'm yeah. just saying what, what I... I mean, like, Bryce Young last year had 10 touchdowns and... I'm sorry, 11 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Well... You know what I mean? Like it, 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 Now, I think they'll do more than what the Panthers did this year. Their offense should be in much better shape. I'm not trying to say I, that. I, I'm just I'm just comparing to other rookies. I, I'm probably too... T- I'm, I'm obviously too tall here. But look, m- the reason why I put that number out there... Tall it, is something you definitely aren't. No argument. All right, I'll, 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 be so I'll cut in there. Comments. We got we <laughs> have some super chats on this topic. Love Bears All Sons five dollars. Do you think that three thousand eight hundred thirty nine yards passing and thirty TDs are reasonable expectations for Caleb's rookie season? Yes. Oh, I mean, for a floor. I mean, I'm sorry for a ceiling. I I don't know if that's. I think the point of this is we're saying floor and ceiling because realistic somewhere in the middle. We're trying Correct. to we're trying to set the parameters for worst best case scenario, so I got no problem if Caleb Williams throws a one interception a game next year. None. Okay, that's, that's totally fine. That's seventeen to me is way different than twenty six. Yes, that would be different. You're talking about the. You're talking about. I'm talking about like let's let's sling it there, Flus. Have you ever heard the word sling, Flus? Let this guy do what well, he wants. That's a to real do. thing, man. Yeah. Come on, baby. Let's 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 sling it around. But okay, fine. I listen. I mean, I'm, I'm admitting too tall, but I'm trying to give the guy some leeway here. And is 200 a game too too tall for a floor? 200 yards a game? I don't think. Well, for f- floor, maybe he's going to be look. throwing for 150. That sucks. I I don't. I, I I'm I'm hoping that's not what we're seeing. Yeah. All right. Well, in the meantime, um, we got to. You know, say hello to some sponsors here on the show. And we'd like to uh, tell you about CD1 Price Cleaners because they have low prices you need to know about. Customers save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD1 Price Cleaners. They have simple, transparent service. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. Plus, they have upcharges and you may pay a different price each time you visit at CD1 Price Cleaners, we charge one low price for any garment. Yep, even sports jerseys you could take there. The same low price they'll give you on those. Plus, they have fast turnaround. CD1 Price Cleaners has your order ready the same day or next day. Other cleaners might take up to two to four days to have your clean garments ready. And CD1 Price Cleaners send you a text when your order is ready for pickup. They do dry cleaning, wash and fold laundry, blankets, comforters, tailoring alterations. They have everything for you. Visit chgo.cd1one.com. The link is in the description. Once there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. Again, that's chgo.cd1.com. And shout out to our friends at Ray Chevy. Best offers of the year during the March Radness sales event. Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings. One of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest. My favorite Chevy dealer in the Midwest or anywhere for that matter, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. The perfect tailgate vehicles await at Ray Chevy during the truck month for a limited time offer, 0% financing for 72 months on the new Silverados with over 100 available, 125 vehicles under 20,000. Seriously, uh, can pricing get any more affordable than that? Hey, listen, everyone loves the word free, and that's what you get this month at Ray Chevrolet and Fox Lake. Free oil change, All you need to do is mention CHGO when scheduling your oil change. Start off the new year right and schedule it by April 1st. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. So tomorrow uh, is Caleb's Pro Day. We mentioned that off the top. And um, I want to just talk a little bit about, A, what you can expect. Okay. And B, like, kind of... I guess what could go wrong or right. I mean, how much stock you should really put into this. I mean, 
is it a big deal? I mean, it's a big enough deal that obviously we're going to it. Um, but ca- part of that, Caleb Williams is expected to talk. He did not throw at the combine. He's expected to throw tomorrow. I believe it's going to be shown on NFL Network if you're interested in watching live. Um, and I'm excited to see him throw in person for the first time. I've never I've watched plenty of his games. I've obviously watched a lot of his film. I haven't seen him in person. So, I mean, I think at this point, it's really more, I don't know what he could prove on the field, right? Like, I don't really know what there is to gain let's or say not he goes, gain from it. Let's say he goes 0 for 50. Did the Bears still draft him? Let's say he has the worst day ever. Miss a guy's high, miss a guy's left. Is there anything he could possibly do on the field that would be like, yeah, no, we're not taking him? I don't think so. And I think it would be irresponsible to, <laughs> in the same way it was irresponsible to, you know, it's it's kind of well documented the day the Jets fell in love with Zach Wilson was his pro day when he threw that 8,000 yard ball. Ridiculous turnaround, chuck it. And like, I mean, I mean, that's irresponsible to put that much stock in any type of play happening without pads on, without a pass rush coming at you. Um, it's more about the tape. And I think in this case, I don't know what the Bears are doing right now. I'm hoping to find out more while I'm in California. But there were photos last night of poles and flus at the airport, presumably flying to California. I don't know if they made a stop somewhere else on the way today. Um but we know from, you know, previous quarterback decisions that have been made, um, the infamous dinner with Mitch Trubisky, right, the night before the pro day. So my guess is stuff like that's happening today slash tonight where they're getting to know the person. That's the most important thing about all this is getting to know more about Caleb Williams, the person, getting comfortable with him. And this is... The first step was the combine. This is now their second date, right? Get to know each other a little bit better. Um, you're, go, you're, you're going to Caleb's place this time. Uh, then the third date will be back at Hallis Hall where you'll get them inside your building. You'll be able to spend even more time with them, see them in, your, in, you know, in the place where he would work if you draft them, and... By the end of all that, plus the medicals that you'll get at House Hall, the decision will go from leaning very hard on a guy to either being in or out, most likely in. I mean, it would take something catastrophic and probably more than one thing. The, right. I don't think there's anything he can do on the field that would implode him coming to the Bears. Now, if they have some horrible meeting, which I would say is highly, highly, highly unlikely, well, that could change things, which yeah. would go back to your reporting, you know, if you bring in the Justin trade, that they are were moving on to another quarterback regardless. So their security in whatever's left to do in their evaluation is that they would start looking at Jaden Daniels, and they'd start looking at Drake May, and they'd start looking at Bo Nix or whoever the hell. Well, not would. start. I mean, they are. Well, they would. They're right, doing they, their homework. They would look further guys. into. Yeah. But, I mean, everybody thinks they're going to take Caleb. They are going to take Caleb. And by the way, J.J. McCarthy's Pro Day is Friday in Ann Arbor, and I assume almost the same exact contingent that's going to be in L.A. tomorrow will be there. Yeah, and momentum for J.J. is real. The Giants seem super interested, all the things. But He's I, I going to be a Viking. I, I don't... I agree with that. Well, the, the, what's interesting... Like, I don't know what you're going to glean from this, but it'll be cool that you're going to be there and that he's going to be firing it around, and um, he's well, going to, he, suppose he's going to talk right in, off. In all it. seriousness, yeah. well, I don't think it determines that, you know anything one way or the other. Part of the reason why I like to see guys throw in person, pads or not, is just, just you get a better idea of what the release looks like, um, a little bit on the accuracy. You don't make any major conclusions off it. But I'll never forget seeing like Derek, your guy Derek Carr, for instance, at the Senior Bowl. And I think that was the same senior bowl as Jimmy Garoppolo, if I'm remembering right. And it, it was just obvious that those two guys were head and shoulders better than everybody else. Now, that's not the situation we're going to be in tomorrow. It's a fair question if someone wanted to ask, why is Caleb even throwing tomorrow? Yep. W- what does he have to gain? Um, what does he have to gain? Good question. Um, what does he have to gain, Adam? 
Well, he doesn't have to listen to uh, the anti-Caleb portion of the world uh, criticize him for not throwing at all in the pre-draft process. It's just a little box he can check. I threw. Yeah, I didn't do it at the combine, but I threw. Uh, so is a little bit of a PR aspect to it. I think the bigger deal for him, if I'm Caleb, pro days in some ways are your goodbye to your school. Like in a personal way. Mm -hmm. I mean, having been to a lot of these, you get back in the building, you're around your coaches, you're in your familiar place, you're around your teammates that you're saying goodbye to. And there's some other fun players from USC in this draft. I mean, if you're Brendan Rice, do you want Caleb Williams throwing you on your pro day or somebody else? It's very, and he's... Uh, so some of it is like a little bit of an ob obligation, and not even an obligation, but a desire to showcase your teammates as as our guy, Guy Finley, says here on the screen right now. Caleb wants to showcase his guys. That's definitely part of it. Guy Finley's never made a comment that's incorrect. It's unbelievable. The guy's always on the money. Look, to me, it almost feels like a little secretariat-esque. He's just a horse that knows that he's an absolute stud. You want to come on and see me run? Okay, sweet. Here it is. This is what I do. Uh, this is the reason why I'm going number one. I'm going to show you that I can throw it going right. I'm going to show you I can throw it left. I'm going to show you that I can, you know, do uh, a quick three-step drop. Boom, uh, come, let like it come I'm out. I show a cap again. Yeah. Bring up secretariat. Well, it, it just, I mean, that's what this. Why don't we have secretariat on the back wall there instead of Jordan jersey? Uh, let's slow down. Let's, that's. Uh, I'm for, just, it's an honest question. Okay, because we put the greatest player to ever play anything up there, and that's what we do. Um, look. It's a fun day for him, man. Gets to, gets to come out, gets to talk with the media, gets to enjoy the fact that he's going to be the number one overall pick. I mean, how big do you think that hug's going to be with Poles and Flus when they show up there after, you know, Justin's been traded, Keenan Allen's here. I think that hug is a little bit tighter, a little, little, little bigger, a little longer. If you're Ryan Poles. Remember the big red commercials? Make your breath a little a little long. Keep that breath Are long. Are you do more jingles? Yes. Is yeah. that the theme of today's show? I mean, I think that I think Flus is is chewing on some good big red. We're getting ready for this hug. They're gonna be. There's gonna be a good break with going Caleb. On. Yes. Hug. Well, they're hugging. Now. They're hugging. This, okay. This, this is a hug. Well, that's why I have to be there. It I have to be, witness the hug. It could be a public. We gotta get hug. video of the hug. Get Nick with the camera out there, zoomed in, perfectly framed hug. There's gonna be a pulse, pulse Caleb hug. Okay. Um, I will make sure we don't miss that if it happens. Get Flus too. See how awkward he is with the. If you're Ryan Poles, don't you think you're feeling a little bit more focused on all this Caleb Williams stuff this week without the Justin trade, Justin Fields trade situation hanging over you? I no. you don't have to stand there on the sidelines at the pro day tomorrow getting texts from Mike Tomlin or whatever. Yeah, sure, but I I think the bigger thing is that he. He, when you have to make a big decision in life that can weigh on you, it's a stress, it's, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating right, the whole thing. And Poles did what was a very hard thing for him to do, I'm sure, because, I mean, we saw, if we're talking hugging, a million embraces with, with Ryan and Justin and Justin and Kevin and all the guys. And they did a hard thing. So, you know, once you're, I'm sure there's some feelings, maybe a drop of, like, you know, that sucked and that was hard and maybe even a, a second of regret when he's looking back. But, um, you know, he made the thing. So I think I think Poles is, is just feeling better, sleeping better right now, right? Wouldn't that be logical? I, I mean, I guess that's the point I'm making is, like, there's – if it's part of the reason. I mean, yes, part of it was do right by Justin, but it's part of the reason why I think at some point you just – yes, could you have waited till the draft and maybe gotten a little bit more? Maybe. Maybe. You don't know for sure. Maybe. And instead you have 37 more days of this being a constant thing. Not just by us talking about it, but for little things like that. You're at Pro Day for Caleb Williams. You got J.J. McCarthy later in the week. Like, every single one of those public... I just told you, this is going to be broadcast on NFL Network tomorrow. What are they doing with Justin Fields? That's what they would be talking about the whole time on the NFL Network. Now they can just talk about Caleb Williams, Chicago Bears, and move forward with that. Yep. All right. We go into celebration mode right now for those of you who are gambling with Circa and those of you who bet that uh, 
Justin Fields would end up in Pittsburgh because you cashed well on that. A hey, circuit tries to keep as much of the money in your pocket with their tight money line splits. Their low hold model games strive to be at a minus 110 split on the circus sports menu. Unlike other sports books where you see a lot of minus 115, minus 120, circuit putting that money in your pocket. And Circa has the real people behind the circus sports brands who resolve issues in a timely fashion, unlike other books who use those chat bot situations. Circa doesn't do that. You can come out and see Circa and us for yourself on beautiful Thursday as we will be at the Circus Sportsbook up in Waukegan. If you're not coming, you can download the Circus Sports Illinois app at circusportscom slash Illinois-app, circusportscom forward slash Illinois-app. Sign yourself up today. Be on the lookout for those circuit events like we have on Thursday, watch parties, tailgates, all the good things. And if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2537, or text GAMB to 833-234, or visit areyoureallywinning.com. And as you know, it's why we're talking about it. We got the NFL draft coming up. And uh, you know what the best thing to pair with the NFL draft is? Miller Lite, of course. Um, Mm. You know... Somehow, there's still a little bit of a debate amongst some fans on who the Bears should take, but one thing that's definitely not a debate, one selection that every football fan can share, and that is an ice-cold Miller Lite. This is a true story. I remember one of my best draft experiences when I was in college. I had friends that had painted a whole wall, like that chalk paint you can put up there, and then everybody put their mock drafts up there, and we were sitting there all day. This was back when the draft was all on Saturday and Sunday. We sat there all day Saturday just drinking Miller Lite, enjoying mm. a, a nice spring day in, in Madison, Wisconsin. It was great. Wisconsin, by the way, Miller Lite, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And as the draft has changed over the years, Miller Lite doesn't. Till, tick off, till kickoff comes again. I did that yesterday, too. Enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash CHGO football. Or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Some news. Last night. Wow, this stadium stuff always seems to drop either late at night or first thing in the morning. This is some good journalism here. People are doing their work. Why is it not just uh, like a noon, like a noon press release? I, 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 I can't, I can't tell you the answer to that. I don't know, but hey, uh, the Chicago Tribune had a story last night on the budge, the budge. I'm calling it the budge by Arlington Heights budging on their tax situation. And uh, this is from a story in an effort to break the impasse between the Bears and the local school districts over the property tax bill on the former Arlington International Racecourse site. The village proposed an agreement to accept the Cook County Board of Review's assessed value of $124.7 million for the 2023-2024 tax years. Um, the bottom line is the total tax liability... Six point three million uh, for the twenty twenty four tax year. The property would be assessed at the ten percent rate, resulting in a tax bill of three point six billion. I'm sorry, million million. Um, according to the proposal, both figures would be a big cut from taxes currently estimated to be near ten million. So instead of ten million, we're talking three point six million. And then after that, the Bears and the school district would come to agree they would enter in good faith negotiations which i'm not necessarily sure this has been so far over assessments with increases guaranteed to be at least three percent but no more than ten percent per year according to the village proposal because that's part of this too it's like the bears want to know what the rate's going to be going forward you know they're going to have this thing for the next 40 years they want to pay less now arlington Heights is saying okay fine they want to pay less in the future. Arlington Heights is saying, okay, fine. We will increase you by 3%, but no more than 10%. The bottom line to all this is that Kevin Warren's doing a very good job. He came into a situation with no leverage as far as the one location. Now he's got two with Chicago. The Bears are saying that their focus remains in Chicago. And I'd like to quote. Did they? Yes. Oh, they did last night? 
They have they a very they have one one line comment. Our focus remains in Chicago right now. Okay, but I remember when they say that about Arlington Heights too. Yeah. So look, the, right. This is going back and forth now, and maybe Waukegan's about to get involved as we're going to Waukegan on Thursday. The next thing you know, Naperville's going to make a play, and, and we're going to and we're and the Bears are going to pay no taxes, and the school districts are going to get nothing. Look, I have a prepared statement for you to read. No, I not reading any of your prepared the, statements. The prepared yeah, statement. I'll, I'll, is, I'll read Adam. You. you were right. No, no, last week. no, no. Here's my prepared statement. You ready? Mm-hmm. Kevin Warren wants the Bears to be in Chicago. Kevin Warren is going to continue to go down that road. Mm-hmm. Chicago needs to do their job and make a good deal. And screw the taxpayers again. That's all. Listen, the last thing I will go down. I I, I find it offensive how. The little people get screwed in this world. So I don't, I don't, I, as much as I want the Bears in Chicago, I don't want it at the cost of just completely screwing the city again. So if it makes more sense that way, go ahead, go to Arlington Heights. Don't screw the city. That would be completely wrong. Make a fair deal. That would be completely right. They belong in Chicago. I really do think, though, that Kevin wants the Bears in Chicago. I do. And I think that Arlington, this, which, and I think that Arlington Heights is feeling that. And that's why they have come, st- you know, drastically correct in a very short period of time, which props again to Kevin Warren. I, well, I don't disagree with you on that, but I also believe that Ke- that Kevin Warren is going to make the best deal for the Chicago Bears, even if his personal preference between the two would be the city. That's fine. I agree. But if, okay. it's, but if it's close in his mind, then it's going to be <laughs> Chicago. Well, let's see if it's close enough because um, I wanted to debate some of the pros and cons between both sites and who has the edge. So – came up with five categories and who which site would have the edge in this conversation to kind of spell this all out we'll go through it one by one wow but whole graphics mansion graphics look at this we talk about let's talk about i i think the most important thing at the end of the day is revenue and control what are you making off of this situation going forward and what type of control do you have over the place you're playing football at? And this is one category where it's undeniable Arlington Heights has the edge. You would own the property, you would control the revenue, and you wouldn't have to deal with the city at all, which at times, as documented in the great documentary NBC Sports did last year, they were sending faxed letters to the city asking for very reasonable, normal upgrades like concessions to Soldier Field and not getting a response for six months. Right, but so that documentary was phenomenal and incredibly well done and is completely irrelevant now because you have... I, complete, I totally disagree. You have different players, man. It, it, you have So you're telling me that this place, and it's not just in recent years, it's pretty much since the new renovation was done. The city has not been a good host to the Bears. I've heard it from inside the organization so that's, many times. That's correct. Do you, so so you're going to gamble on a, we're starting over, brand new property, and when Brandon Johnson and the next Lori Lightfoot comes in, Brandon Johnson's gone, the next Lori Lightfoot comes in, and who's to say it doesn't all happen again? That's you, a hell of a gamble compared to, I own the property, I get the revenue, I control what needs to be done to this place. Right, but the, the, you have to live in the now, okay? It's... It, Kevin Warren's not going to sitting sitting around wondering who the next mayor is going to be. He who, has to. Well, what? Well, hold on. He doesn't. This is a 40, 50 year he's, bet. He's yes, that's true. But they're going to have a contract. It's going to be signed. He's got to make a deal. He's making a deal with Brandon Johnson, who's in his box, who's hanging out with him, who they clearly has built the, a solid relationship in a short period of time has been built. He's going to make a deal that whoever the mayor is, whether it's Brandon or whoever's coming in next, that deal's going to look good. He wants to be in Chicago, man. I, I, I think it's pretty obvious. Now, again, there's a lot of things that are appealing to Arlington Heights. And as I speak, as I think people, if, you, if, you're, if you're missing the point here, I'm not saying that logically, business-wise, it doesn't make the most sense to be in Arlington Heights. Maybe it does. I'm saying with my heart as a fan, as a Chicagoan, I want the Bears in the city, and I want them to make a good deal to be in the city. And and shockingly, surprisingly, beautifully, Kevin Warren seems to, seem to, seems to have the same thought, that they actually do belong there, I, and I, that he loves the city. I, 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 
I think to a point. I think sure. But sure, my but. point to you is, I think you're buying into that a little bit too much because we're living in this certain time in this whole saga where he needed to create leverage. So him coming out publicly and saying, "I love the city, I want all this," and then they publicly come out and they're like, "The he, city is our focus." That was to get the taxes down, which Arlington Heights budged. Yeah, the budge it well, happened. Well, and, and they they needed to because it was they. That's the other point about this. Do you think that they would have budged if they didn't feel like this was real? That there's actual... Re- so- I do agree. I said that last week. Okay. For the first time, there is a somewhat realistic option on the right. table. Right. Before that, th- there was another. This is why I said on this. If you missed it last week, Kevin Warren is cleaning up yet another one of Ted Phillips's mess. But, but it's not because the but, Bears went all in on this Arlington Heights property with no other option, giving them absolutely no leverage against the village of Ar- Arlington Heights to get any type of tax break. Yes, that's part of it. And, uh, and to what percentage of the is it is it is it really just a leverage play that a lot of people he's just doing this so he can get the taxes down in LA times or is he being genuine in his desire to actually be in Chicago I think it's a little bit of both it it well well I think it's a lot of the first and a little bit of the second see I think it's a lot of the second and a little of the first I I think he I think he really it was they've been putting well, they weren't going to sign a bad deal with Arlington Heights what that tax assessor did was complete BS well Right, they but, were never going to agree to that. But, but this is this momentum has been building for a while. The Bears did a piece on their website following Kevin Warren around the city from his car to his drive. They couldn't have outlined more how much this guy liked. This is before we got to the point that we got here. Like you the, read that piece, you that was the first example of them trying to oversell the city to set this whole thing up. They're right. They're setting it. In, but you, I'm you. So you think it's all big setup? I like you know what I, I can't think I can't live like that. I, I think it's like eighty percent set. I can't live twenty percent. Yes, I, I do prefer the city. I prefer the city. I've said that a million times. Okay, I'm trying to talk in realistic world here. Let's put the graphic up. We're gonna spend each. We got to go through each one of these. So Arlington Heights. You can tear down Soldier Field, Rich Low. You can't tell them to tear down the comps. They're gonna tear it down and build a beautiful thing. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, cost. This is where Chicago, I do think, has the edge. Because if you're going to go all in on your own thing in Arlington Heights, you're going to get less public money. And you're going to probably have to foot the bill. They've already said that they would, with with the exception of general infrastructure. Or we're talking roads, traffic lights, plumbing, you know, sewer, stuff like that. The, tr- um, the trolley to the train that everyone's going to take. And it's going to be so seamless. Everyone's just going to get on the metro and fly in and out of there. Okay. So while revenue control is definitely on the Arlington Heights side... If you do get a good deal, like if if the city comes out and is like, you can have 90% of the Taylor Swift profits when she comes to town, which they would get all of it if she's at Arlington Heights, then, oh, the cost is a lot lower. Cause, well, I don't know a lot. They did say $2 billion. They were still going to foot the bill for the Soldier Field project. Um, so, But yes, uh, um, 100%, the cost would be lower for the Bears. If they do the lakefront project. Okay. And look, you are as, as intelligent as you are. We're living in a land here that is for like some high level economists to actually figure out how the dollars are going to flow and who's and exactly how it's all going to benefit. I mean, this, there's, there are ways in which the bears don't technically own the stadium. They get all, they get a lot of benefits and it makes sense for them to do it this way. Well, I mean, yeah, what you're talking about is sure, they're higher level economists that can talk about the specifics, sure, but we have plenty of examples. And I think one of the very, if I'm going to start making the argument for you, perhaps the best argument for them actually getting this done is what happened in Minneapolis with this being put under a government entity, with it being a shared, it's not owned by the Vikings, but they have a lot of control over it. And it was a really well-built stadium. And that seems to be... Who built that stadium? Who made that deal? um, I'm trying to think of the... uh, uh, Lester Bagley, I think, is the guy um, who actually can take a lot more credit than Kevin Warren can. Get Bagley in here, then. Get it done. Let's go. Lester's a great man. He gave us two tours of that stadium. The year before it opened and then when it did open. And then I went on a third tour of it last year with my son. Okay. Listen to me. Let's get, should we get to the next point? Yeah, go to the next point. Okay, the next point, um, as we continue to talk about this uh, stadium 
Ben's pluses place is right. minus. I'm on the payroll here. Go ahead. Location. I'm not going to sit here and argue that Arlington Heights is a better location. Thank you. There a are of parts of it that are better um, in terms of the yeah. next two categories we'll get to, but is the Chicago Lakefront a better place for a stadium or Arlington Heights is unquestionably the lakefront. Yes, we would all love to live in a perfect world where they can build SoFi Stadium, which is not in Los Angeles, um, but U.S. Bank Stadium is in the heart of Minneapolis. Good for them. Totally different situation. Better politics there. More realistic. And for a while, it wasn't realistic, but they got it done. Location better Chicago Lakefront than Arlington Heights. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. All right. Thank you for underlining that. I appreciate it. Keep going. Well, that's part that would be stupid to argue otherwise. Now, that being said, I do think when you kind of put all of these together, revenue, the control over your stadium, part of the location advantage for Arlington Heights, while not as aesthetically pleasing, is the land. The land, in my opinion, would give that project a much better stadium experience. Talking about outside and inside the stadium, when you're actually once you get to the location, because I didn't. One thing I didn't put on here was in terms of location was like commuting, because I got news for you, it's a wash. It's not exactly easy to get to Soldier Field. Some people in Northwest Indiana, South Suburbs, are getting screwed. All the Bears fans up north, if you're in, if you're Gary Ross and McHenry, Arlington Heights is way more convenient. If you're in Cary or you're in Schaumburg, any of those places up there. So to me, if you're in Naperville, at worst it's a wash. It's probably easier to get to Arlington Heights than to come all the way downtown. So in terms of what they can build on the land that they have, to me there's no question the actual experience once you get to the game. From the tailgating, which again goes to the last category on there. Parking, non-debatable. Parking will be way better in Arlington Heights. I'm not sure. That, I, one thing I'm skeptical is I'm not sure the traffic will be better. Traffic's terrible going to Soldier Field, but they got a lot of infrastructure and roads they got to fix up there. Trust me, I live up that way. It, it will be a nightmare. So I'm not sure about traffic, but parking will be way better. I think the tailgating will be way better. I think the overall start to finish from when you get to the stadium to when you leave Arlington Heights gives you a better option. See, I'm just envisioning somebody driving into the city, stopping by good old Carms Hood. Let's go over to Flo and okay. Santos, have a pizza, enjoy. Maybe, we, you know, actually for, forget Flo and Santos in the South. Let's go West Loop and, and hang out at Salerno's. Let's do that. Whatever. Walk over. You see the skyline. Beautiful museum campus. You walk in. Oh, my God. Look at this sweet place. This is just amazing. Look at this. Look at this roof with the sun coming in off the lake, the glistening. To me, that's just a, well, that's a lovely experience. And sure, uh, where you are 100% right that I will not debate is there's just no way. I don't know what the how they're going to do the parking down here. They don't it's literally not in the plan. They're they're going to have to they're going to have to dig down to the core of the earth to do it. I don't know how they're going to do they're it. They're going to build a 50 uh but That's where people a 50 floor parking garage under the stadium. Maybe they will. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> They'll the, somebody smarter than me will have to figure that one out cuz they're going to have to park the cars. That's what's up. And I saw somebody uh on on Twitter writing at us like, "Look, you know, I I'm a season ticket holder, and I could sell my parking on game day for 350 bucks At Soldier Field? At Soldier Field. That's crazy. Three, because there's just not a lot of parking, which is, I'm always like, why are you driving? But to your tailgate experience, yes, that that will be better. Although people, you know, this is where we could use the Braggs man, because all he does is walk through the south line and enjoy the tailgate there so it's not like people aren't tailgating we our tailgates were amazing mm -hmm. you're just not tailgating in the same way that you would you're going to tailgate in early tonight it's not gonna be as close to the stadium uh eli with a super chat here 999 best thing for the bears is a bidding war between multiple sites it's business carm you're reacting how warren hopes the city reacts minnesota did also build facilities and a hotel uh and revenue in the burbs they did do that their <clears throat> practice facility they ended up kind of building a similar, all that extra stuff, all the extra development the Bears want around the stadium, which goes back to the revenue and control thing. They kind of hedged both because they built all that. There's hotels. There's a curling venue out there. Um, the Twin Cities Orthopedic Center. I actually haven't been there yet. Um, but they 
kind of created all that development around their practice facility, which the Bears cannot do in Lake Forest. So they're getting that revenue from a different stream than the stadium that they did make this bet against. Um, what I want to what I want to kind of spin this to because I'm not ruling out what you're hoping happens. I'm not. But this is why I didn't budge last week and that I think Arlington Heights is the favorite. I think when you put that graphic up on the screen, you look at those five main points and Arlington Heights having the edge on three of the five, the question is, Carm, what are you going to fix? How are you going to move at least one of those check marks over to the uh, Chicago side? Because that gets back to that super chat we just had on this. Uh, my, Make this a bidding war. How do you, if you're Brandon Johnson, if you're the developers, how do you say, no, I can give you more revenue. I can give you more control. I can make the experience better. I can invent parking on the Lake Michigan. I, We're going to provide everyone with a raft to park their car on. Right. Uh, well, that is a... Could be a factor like we're gonna have jet new jet skis that'll be available like early in the oh, season. If you but throw look, in jet skis, I'm all about city I, stadium. I don't think that Kevin Warren looks at experience and thinks that it's gonna be better in Arlington Heights. I just don't think he thinks that. And, and let me let me do an exercise for you. If you if you please just just close your eyes right now. Like if you just just thank you thank you very much. Careful, close close your eyes. I'll, I'll do the same. And just try to envision the future and try to envision a press conference with Kevin Warren is saying and in one he's saying we are so incredibly pleased to be able to partner with the city of Chicago in this great, Why are you talking so slow? beautiful downtown lakefront to build what we think will be the greatest stadium in the history of the NFL and sports in its entirety. I don't believe you. Okay. <laughs> Keep your eyes closed then. <laughs> we are so thrilled to be moving from Chicago out to this beautiful suburb 40 miles from the epicenter of entertainment where we can try to create a legacy that's greater than what Dick Duchess will had here with Pat Day and all the great jockeys. And we're going to be in the suburbs because we've got great parking. Welcome to Arlington Heights. Now, which one can you hear him saying? I think it's pretty clear that he wants to say the first one. Yeah. Are you that deranged that you think that would be the opening statement for the Arlington Heights? We are so thrilled that we've got all this parking that you can yeah, now that's park. what they're going to say. <laughs> you went to the town hall meeting, which, by the way, was a year and a half ago. Yeah. Which is when it, It's funny. When you start to be like, wow, this thing's not even going to be open until 2030, and then you realize it's been a year and a half since that town hall and nothing's happened other than they closed on the property and knocked everything down, and then Arlington Heights said it was worth more money. I remember this thing's gonna be a nightmare. The, the, this, the, look, some people. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much longer this thing's gonna go on, but it feels like it's gonna want to go on for a while longer. This thing's gonna drag out. He wants to have it done by the end of the year. So, what are we in here? Middle of March. He also said at Lurie's in January that he was hoping to have like a resolution by in two months, and all that became was the bear the. Chicago option to get the taxes down in Arlington Heights. We're still a long ways away. That's what I'm saying. We're still a long ways away, and and that's the oh we never still, talked about this though. We found the flamingo boats. Yeah, we did from the. Uh, you remember the renderings from the Arlington Heights project that they put at that town hall meeting, and then everybody was out on that. Um, um, what do you call it? A moat. Or a little pond that you could row on. But there was like flamingo or there were like bird things. We found them. Yes, we were in Indianapolis. Hogue took me on some weird walk down by like the one piece of actually of water down there. I didn't even know they had water in I've Indianapolis. I've been in Indianapolis like 35 times. I, I've never been able to find this canal that they talk about. And we had a nice walk down. Yeah, we, had a, we had a lovely walk at the canal. And there were the flamingos that the bears are storing until they can bring them to Arlington tonight so everybody can do paddle boats on, on, on Sunday mornings as they go into the expansive property with where everyone's going to live and park and drink and buy t-shirts and eat at restaurants and do yoga. That's what's happening. Do I need to start giving people like directions around the city? Greg had a comment there. There's no easy way to get from Arlington to Arlington from Jolie. It's a straight shot up 355. You don't need to do that. It's literally a straight line. Listen, 
Nobody wants to go to Arlington Heights. Not, okay. e- not even you. Gar- don't want to go to Arlington nobody, Heights. N- nobody. Stop projecting that. <laughs> I, I'm on record, guys. I'll go to Arlington. It's closer to my house. I am perfectly fine, and I actually prefer them to come to some type of conclusion in my hometown of Chicago that I still love dearly. I would prefer it to be in Chicago. I have also come as a lifelong Chicagoan, know what's realistic here. And it certainly is not that crazy video they put out with uh, who is who is uh, narrating that thing. Bill again? Curtis. Is Bill the Curtis. Bill Curtis was uh, narrating that video. It looked awesome. It looked unbelievable. If they can build that with the Bears' two billion dollars that they're pledging, start the construction tomorrow. I'm ready to go. The mayor wants investment in the city. The mayor needs investment in the city. I we'll see. We shall see. I I'll just tell you this. I am not moving off my hopes and dreams of, a, of the ending that you just described. Mm-hmm. And there's a movie out there by the name of, uh, it's called Midnight Run. And uh, anybody seen Midnight Run? Have you seen Midnight Run? Robert De Niro? I don't think so. You never saw Midnight Run? If you didn't see it, then literally nobody's watching has seen it. because What it, year did that come out? 92? 88, 87, 86. I'm guessing it was You're looking at me like I know. I was Mid- born in 93. Con. Midnight Run was De Niro, Grodin, phenomenal. 1988. There you go. 88. There you go. I was two. It's a it's a classic. It's in fo- it's phenomenal. You were 42. And and they try to make a deal at the end. No, 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 no. Too late for you, shithead. That's what I'm saying to Arlene Zeitz. No, 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 no. Too late for you. You can do all your taxes there. Too late for you. Truck has moved. Train is gone. Out the station. Johnson, Warren, Deal, Chicago, Southside, Lakefront, Bears. I actually made a YouTube poll on this topic to see where the fans want this next stadium to be. And this one was a razor-thin vote. With 54% of the vote, the winner was Arlington Heights. Yeah. Those people are not allowed to watch the show anymore. No, congratulations. Uh, don't, 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 don't tell them not to watch the show. Yeah, Please hit subscribe. Arlington, Please hit the like Arlington button. Arlington Heights. Listen, you all are going to be going to a Super Bowl on the lakefront, and you're going to love every second of it. No, 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 no. The, yeah. the Bears are going to win a Super Bowl before the stadium gets done because they're going to draft Caleb Williams. I said they're going to go to a Super Bowl. Okay. They're going to go. Well, I'm just saying, I just want to make it clear that if if they're not going to a Super Bowl until the stadium gets done, bad things have happened. No, we're winning the Super Bowl this year. No, we're not. We're winning it this year. Okay. You... Can none of your negativity? Why didn't you put that in your ceiling earlier in the show? I should have. You're Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Ceiling. Year one. I don't have that in my ceiling. Bears. No. I, this is this this year should be 1984 into 85. 84 Bears went to the playoffs, won a football game, lost to a better team. That's what's happening this or year. Or 2015 in the 2016 Watch Tavern style, where I kick Carm's ass in a Bears versus Cubs argument. You are becoming a, a more dynamic debater. I have to. I have to say, like you're 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 a little you're a tougher foe these days. It's it's, it's annoying. Yeah, yeah, but I I I and not that I've ever lost an argument in my life because I'm just that good. Right. But I don't feel very. You're s- very good at developing talent that beats you. You know, you take it. <laughs> Nick Wright, Danny Parkins, I didn't devel- I Adam Hogue. Sure. You, you, I'm trying to give you credit here. Take the credit. No, you are excellent at what you do. You make people who debate at you elite. No one gives more confidence to people in their inner circle that they could beat me than that I could. Listen, look, I'm doing this. All you got to do is be better than me. And then yeah. you guys just take off. It's unbelievable. It's you have a Nick, gift. I do. I do. Thank you. Um, yeah. That's so funny because. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, we supers. Story. We got lots super of super. Yeah, we got 13 of them today. Where's Ooh. Pizzatola? Is he in here? I have not seen Pizzatola in the chat today. No, I've you just... know, 50% of the show being you was a little bit too much for Pizzatola today. No, Piz- I just saw Pizzatola. He's Pizzatola. Don't think he's not. <laughs> he's out there. He's out He's out. He's out doing the best Pizzatola he could possibly be. $10 from Ebony Sales. What's up, Ebony? The only expectation I have is Cable Whips looks like he knows what's going on when he hits the back of his drop. The rest we worked out based on that. I, Ebony, I think that's well said. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, Chris Evans, four ninety nine. The Bears team, Caleb is coming to is significantly better than the Colts team 
luck inheritance. Great point, Chris. So I actually looked into that a little bit. It was T.Y. Hilton was on his rookie year. Reggie Wayne was pretty old at that point. Yeah. Um, and then there was a couple good tight ends. So, I mean, yeah, I, 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 would, I, I would agree I'm that this team Bears, is better. I'm guessing the Bears' defense is better than what the Colts had. So, and the offensive line, I'm trying to think of when that Colts offensive line got god-awful with Ryan Grixon as the GM. It might have been around that same time. Yeah, there was a point where Luck was one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, he was always running for his life. So, that's another thing. That's a part of this equation. Um, all right. Matt Renta199. Does a wide receiver pick at nine mean commitment to pass over run? Uh... Matt, you know, you know it's it's interesting, Matt, because we have a new offensive coordinator. We're going to have a new quarterback. We're going to have pressure to win. We've got some dynamic receivers, though. You 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 invested in a running back, so I think you're going to hear a whole lot about how the Bears are going to have a balanced attack. Yep, I think. Well, my hope They're is not- it's balanced, but yes, I hope we're talking about a quarterback that's at least. It's on the table that can reach your ceiling of 3,400. No, that was your floor. That's my floor. I mean, I don't, I don't hate that floor. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I, it's hard for anybody who's watched this Bears team our whole lives to envision that. I'm sorry. 200 yards. I again. know. I know. I'm with you. For Caleb Williams, that should not be a problem. I mean, should I put it? Where should we put it? 175? No, I like it. I like it. I'm just, it's one of those things where until we see it, it's hard to believe for the Bears. Okay. But now I'm starting to sound like RG3, so yeah. I'm with you. Uh, Craig Leach, $20. Thank you, Craig. Draft day weight is giving me anxiety. Spotty internet at the steel mill today. Bear down. Let's go, CHGO. Hit the like and subscribe. Cheers from Chesterton. We're going to, I mean, tomorrow. Two for Craig. Seriously. I got the you, live counter right here. Let's hit the subscribe button. Ooh, we're, so we're at 5216. So Wait. that means we had 16 since the show started. If, yeah, we were you, at exactly 52,000. Yeah. Come if, on. We can get that up to 30 right now. If if you don't hit the subscribe button, you might forget that tomorrow's show, Hogue and Nick are going to be in the sunshine with Caleb Williams. Okay, he's not going to be on the show, but you know, you'll be close to him. You might forget if you don't hit the subscribe button. Yeah. We, we can't have that. We can't have that. You can't have that. We need you there. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate you. Why isn't you. that counter moving? It is on my <laughs> laptop, and it's not on the screen right now. That's weird. So what is it really at? 52,024. Oh, there it just went a little bit. It went to 21. All right, it's moving. 24. Let's get it to 30 at least here real quick. It doesn't – I guess it's changing on the screen a little bit slower. So It, it does take a little bit for yeah. it to take a I'm going to assume that it's at 30. Um. Nuku, is he next? Yes, he is. Nuke, four ninety nine. Might be a dumb question, but is there any confirmation on other pro days the Bears will be at slash have been at already? Happy Tuesday, guys. As always, uh, bear down. Well, we know they were at Oregon last week. It's a Gary Ross question. Yeah, Oregon State. I'm sure Gary has a full list. He could DM you, Matt. Um, I hope you guys are following each other on Twitter. Um, and um, I'm pretty much confirmed they're going to be at Michigan. Pro Day, um, I assume. I mean, well, first of all, they have representation at almost all of them, uh, except for Northwestern. <coughs> um, uh, right down the it street. was a rough, rough, <laughs> rough, rough, rough pro prospect year yeah, for the Cats. They have representation at all the ones they need to be at. Um, but it's just a matter of like, do you send your offensive line coach and a scout to Notre Dame? Thursday is Notre Dame. So, Joe Alt. Does wouldn't shock me if though the Bears go L.A., South Bend, Ann Arbor in three days. I don't necessarily know the answer to that question. Um, the GM doesn't go to all of them because, well, by the way, tomorrow I think Ohio State and Alabama also have their pro day. So, like, Fluce has got to go to L.A. to meet the quarterback, you would hope. But um, Eric Washington probably sending him to Alabama tomorrow, I would think. Yeah, you would. And look, uh, Nuku, don't you worry your little head, Nuku. We are, the Bears are everywhere. They are covering their bases. They are literally looking at every single prospect. And this is the year they don't mess up in the draft, damn it. With our four picks. Look at what? This. You just, <laughs> I love your, uh, 
your, I don't know if it's even optimism. It's just like, I'm calm. I can speak anything into existence, including a stadium. I live in a world of vast optimism where there are, all it, all I see is sunshine. You are an op, you are a more optimistic calm when Braggs is not here. I will, I will agree. Well, life is better when Braggs is not here. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, all the cloud storm of flatulence. <laughs> That is his sweatpants are not in existence, and I just feel better. The cloud storm <laughs> of flatulence. Yeah. Moving along to our guy, the Tampa Bear. I got my tickets, draft party, let's go. And in the spirit of Greg Braggs, the great Greg Braggs, the only Greg Braggs, come on wait, out wait, to wait. our draft party. Yeah, yeah. He so, actually super chatted us, and he also texted me eight times during the show. Not about this. He is still somehow working. He's got clip requests. He well, says, he's obviously not promote the, the draft because party. We've, we've mentioned the draft party at least three or four times already. Let's get the graphic up, though, since we're I on can't. the topic. Oh, it doesn't count. He says, promote the draft party or you're fired. I don't think you have that power, Braggs. He's but think, He thinks he has that power. He, he's, he does think No, that. he'll bang down the door right now. Don't you think he won't? Hey, there it is. Uh, April 25th, April 26th. Two days. Come on. Come all. Come to both. Come to one. But come to something. We need you. Uh, I heard that um, – there's a rumor going around. I don't even think it's a rumor. I think it's confirmed fact uh, that we've already sold 50%, over 50% of the ticket allotment. This this event can and probably will sell out, guys. So we announced this thing, I think, was that Thursday we announced it last week? And we're, so in less than a week, we've already sold over 50% of the tickets. So tickets are going fast. There's a lot of other reasons just in the show to come join. Obviously, it's going to be a celebration. It's going to be fun. We're going to plenty of Miller Light for you. Um, but Gary Fensick's going to be there Friday too. You're going to have a meet and greet with Gary Fensick. We got a DJ rolling on Thursday night. We got uh, Dalton, Carm, and the Sheriffs on yeah. uh, Friday night. Yep, yeah. and you know it's country band. One of the benefits uh, of having so many diehard Bears fans in my life is that a lot of you thought that Justin Fields wasn't going anywhere. And I just knew that you were wrong. So I made bets. And uh, I've got a lot of money to buy people drinks at the old thing. Whoa. That's, I'm going to give back that way. Because my guy, Will Taplin, who was screaming at me in this chat, he lost 100 bucks to me. Gary Ross lost 20 bucks that he says he's going to pay on the show. He, Gary thought that they, were, that they would get a second-round pick for him. I bet against that. I mean, I just made money on this thing. Because everyone was so crazy. Like, yeah. Okay. So, uh, drinks on Carm until it runs out. Come out to the draft party. I mean, I'm going to cash in on that. That was the best promotion that right there. Drinks on Carm. I like I, that. Somebody else owes me 100 too. I'm not sure. I, I got to try to remember. I, I think I got 220 It's funny because I was thinking, like, what bets did you make, like, on an app? I didn't even know what you could bet on that. And then, no, I'm just betting random people on the internet, and they owe me all this money. Well, they were not completely random. <laughs> Because I could get, you know, these are people that were... Do you were think Gary's going to pay up? Oh, I know he's going to pay up. Gary's, okay. I, I offered Gary when it, when it was obvious. I, but I think he would pay up, too. Oh, he's paying up. Yeah. I, Braggs would not. No, he would make something up. And then he, he... Actually, Braggs is the type of guy that would come after me for $10 on a stupid bet that I made on the show. If you just be quiet for 10 minutes, I'll give you 10 bucks. Well, I, I wouldn't the be surprised if you, if you see Gary at our live watch live show and watch party at Circa and Waukegan. On Thursday. Yeah. I, I bet he's going to be there. It's in Waukegan. He'll be there. Fingers crossed. Um, oh, we got a graphic of the live show and watch party. It's going to be awesome. All right. It's uh, been up on the screen <laughs> at least six times. Yeah, okay. Well, then that's on me. I point the thumb right here. Splash it, my guy. Four ninety nine. What's up, splash it? Um, Caleb is a reach, just like Justin was. His time to throw is just as high and nearly the same, and sack percentage, too. Add in his attitude, and he will be a bust bookmark it. Well, that's the most. Splash big. it. Come on, splash it. We don't need that energy right now. Uh, okay. I get it. You're in your feelings. It's it's cool, splash it. I have feelings, too. Uh, watch the tape a little bit closer and understand, not to sound like Matt Nagy, the why and why the numbers on throwing time percentage is the same. Um, the types of throws that are actually made, the anticipation – and what was the last thing he cited there? Uh, oh, the sack rate. Just watch USC's offensive line. Well, also, if you, if you go... Stop and, comparing college and NFL stats. If you look at his sacks, most of them came on third down, which 
I hear some of you saying, so what's your point? My point is that it's third and long. He's trying to make a play. He's running around. Yeah, he's defenses trying to, are in their pass rush mode. So he's not like, it's not a random, you know, it's not, the, the, the numbers aren't even close. So hopefully, listen, I, I'm not, I have, I'm, I, I have more concerns than Hoke has, um, but no. <laughs> he'll never learn, guys. He just that, he, that, he, that he'll, went, that for went, those that listening to the podcast. Well Could have gone for those listening to the podcast. Okay. Carm, what is that spill number five mm. for you? You just an entire no no no. Cup. You can't. You, you can't. You, you just you have to survive. End the show. Move. We somewhere. can't end the show. We got a lot of supers to still get okay. to. Okay. <laughs> But we also have a cup of water on the ground. Thank God it was just water and it landed on the ground and that wasn't on yeah. my computer well, that's why, again. That's why I put it over there. So there was a learning process. No, there wasn't a learning process because we talked about this. Yeah, somebody, you put a lid. Somebody stole my lid. And I'll be a hypocrite today because I don't have a lid on my coffee cup. Shout out to the Chicago Wolves. Um, but I also have never spilled on the show, which I'm sure I'll regret saying that sometime soon. <laughs> but Edward, you're funny. Carmen needs a sippy cup. I do, actually. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we move along now? Because oh, now you want to move along. Now huh? I do. Want, well, okay. I wanted to move along before. but If someone brings Carm a sippy cup to the event in Waukegan at Circa <laughs> on Thursday, I will love you forever. If someone does it, would you agree to drink from it th during the entire show? Uh, I would. Yes, I will go sippy That's cup. That's a good I deal. I might bring myself a Miller Lite in a sippy cup? Oh, I, I mean, love I'd that. rather go bourbon if we're, <laughs> if we're going sippy cup. Okay. No disrespect to our fine spots for Miller no, Lite. I love a Miller Lite and a sippy cup of bourbon. How's that? There you go. Chris Evans, 499. They would be absolute morons to have a stadium anywhere, but Arlington owning your own stadium is way better than renting. Justin Smith, 999. I'm convinced any fan that claims that they don't want Caleb has never watched a snap of him actually play football. Everyone should become a diehard. P.S. We should move out of Chicago. You were on fire, Justin, and I do think you're Hoag's cousin officially for everything you just said. Yeah, I was going to say. That, that is, that that, is your, that's, that's my burner account. <laughs> that is Justin Smith. You are Justin Smith's. But the, I, no, the last part, I, that's not me. That's true, but you're like... I'm okay with them moving okay out of Chicago, and you, and you'll probably but I, my preference, I'm like 51% state. I think you'd say. like them to go to Arlington so you can just say that you were right. I mean, it would be yet <laughs> another victory for me in my undefeated record against you. Yeah, do, do the lap. I can't wait to see undefeated the, as the Arietta Bears thing. I cannot wait to see who determines the winner in that one. Uh, Eli Sherman, 999. Best thing for the Bears is a bidding war between multiple sites. Oh, we read this one earlier. Um, I don't think we did. We, yeah, we did. Okay, uh, great. It's business karm. You're reacting. Oh, yeah, Warren hopes the city reacts. Minnesota did this with their facilities. Fernando, I appreciate the super chat, though, Eli. Uh, Fernando Rodriguez, 199. New stadium is a dome. Who cares about the lakefront? <laughs> I do think that's actually a great point in there. Like, we're talking about, oh, it's so beautiful. You, you're inside. Well, that's why I brought up stadium experience as like a separate thing. Because it's like once you're there, what's the experience? Yeah, but you are – the experience is going to be amazing. You think they're not going to build it incredibly – he's going to build the best stadium that he could possibly build. It's going to be incredible. I know, but there. it's not going to have the same tailgating. It's you be used to work in Kansas City. Don't tell me that that shouldn't matter. Go to I'm a game saying, at Lambeau. I'm not There's a reason why Bears fans go to Lambeau all the time. Do we not have just because it's three do, hours do, away. Do, it's awesome. Do we have a great tailgate? Is our tailgate incredible? We do. And no offense to the great people that play in our tailgates and brags, but the closest lot we can get is like a mile away. Great. Because it's downtown Chicago. You, if we... If we were, if we were, and thank God we're not, but if we were the all city network in Green Bay, Wisconsin, we'd be five feet away from the entrance. Yeah. Because, and, that, and that would be cool, but our, but I'm still having a great time. Are you not having a great time? Have you ever been to Green Bay? Yes, Seriously. I've been to Lambeau. Lambeau's okay. amazing. La there could not be a worse place in the world for a stadium. There's nothing there. You literally drive into Green Bay, and what do you see? You see a Walmart and Lambeau Field. And your point is? My point is that the stadium experience is undeniably better there, despite it not being on a beautiful lake in downtown Chicago. It's not even a competition. The stadium's better. The tailgating's better. Everything around it is better. 
Unfortunately, also the quarterback play. Traditionally better. Lambo just... Uh, okay. I'm, I'm I'm saying that you can create that, though, with a lot of lane you have in Arlington I, Heights, I, and it should be better because Arlington Heights up here, Green Bay down here. Like, there's no debate the, there. O- the only thing that, that is better is the parking. Better parking. That's... If the stadium is going to be incredible... The ambiance of walking up to the stadium is going to be great in the city, dude. It's going to be amazing. You're putting a lot of faith in the city of Chicago, whatever entity owns this thing, whether it's the Illinois Sports Facilities Association, to get... I have way more faith that if the Bears control the whole thing, that the stadium will be better. I think the lot of land that it sits on will be bigger and more spacious, which matters. The footprint will be better. The way everything's laid out. Your flamingo boat that you can sit on before the I'm, game. I have full trust that Kevin Warren won't sign up to build some shitty-ass stadium that he's not going to like. Yeah. All right. Kevin Warren is my hero. Kevin Warren, get this done. We I believe do this. in you, Kevin. Unlike Hogue, who apparently just doubts your abilities. Chris Pagero, 499. <laughs> Could you guys? That is just so inaccurate. That's why I was excited about Kevin Warren getting this job was for the stadium. And so far, he's, you don't believe in Ward. Carver believes in Ward. So far, he's doing everything outstanding, including dropping the Chicago thing last week and getting the taxes down in Arlington Heights in five seconds, which is what I told you was going to happen. Chris Pagero, four ninety nine. Could you guys please make this stadium segment a video ASAP so I can send it to my aunt? Thank you. Yes, we. Can I do will that. get that done after the show. We'll make it a separate link Hi, on our aunt, YouTube channel. You're the best, aunt. Outside of Aunt Ev, who was my favorite aunt. Charles Coors. Yes. Uh, Coors, also part of the uh, Molson Coors uh, family here at CHGO. For, not, uh, he spells it differently, but 499 Hogue. We are counting on you to point out if Caleb looks special throwing tomorrow. You called it when Justin looked slow in training camp last year. Yeah, it took a little beating for that one, but here we are. I don't get any credit for what I said in training camp last year. It's all Hogue's cre- oh, oh, oh. He's actually referring to... Um, I believe he's actually referring to uh, mini camp when I no, went on the no, score. I, I, I expressed some of my concerns. Listen, I'm very, I'm very interested to hear your analysis tomorrow. I think it's phenomenal that we're going, and I look forward to the show tomorrow. It's going to be great. CJ Ferdinando, four ninety nine. Let's compromise and put the new stadium in Joliet. Love the show, guys. My first name is Carmen, so I love Cram. CJ, you're the man. Uh, Pizzatola. There my guy is. $2. Carm, here's your $2. I'm always Pizzatoling. <laughs> my guy. That's great. I, Pizzatola and I, I think, I think we are the journey of friendship on the internet that everyone needs. Pizzatola was coming at me, and he's still coming at me. But now we're besties. But he loves you. That's how it should be. He loves me, and I love my Pizzatola. I love the way he pisses tolls. We can get heated. We can get in heated arguments about Jake Arrieta and Jose Contreras, but not say mean things to each other like you and Greg. I love Greg. He's so inspirational to me, and I just am just so fortunate every day when I can wake up and look at my phone and think to myself, "Wow, I can call Greg Braggs." Isaac Siegel, two dollars. Saw an ex troll. That's a. I did, that's a good. Phrase or extra, yeah. S- uh, say media forced polls to trade. LOL. That is my favorite conspiracy theory. Um, again, I wish I had that much power. I can promise you that trade was not made because of anybody in the media. Uh, Caleb T. Brennan, four ninety nine. Bears have drafted four first round quarterbacks since nineteen ninety four. Trubisky was the only one picked first in his class. Development or just not getting the guy right? Picked Trubisky. Oh, I see what you're saying. I missed it. Because Trubisky was the actual first quarterback taken off the board. We did not develop Justin well. We didn't develop Mitch well. That's all true. We also made the wrong choice with Mitch, obviously. Yes. So it's a combination. You didn't really make a wrong choice with Justin. We did not. Because based on who was available. I mean, As like, it turns out, there was no right choice. I mean, it was Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, but I'd was still never give it available. to Trevor Lawrence, but it's not like it's been a home run. It was a fair swing. In fact, if, 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 if I want to give some anti-Caleb crowd 
uh, some momentum. Like the last hyped up quarterback that was even close to this would have been Trevor Lawrence, and it hasn't. It's been good. It's not been great. But right. my response to that would be, yeah, but it's been good, which is what I've been saying about the floor. It's been better than what you had. Right, and well, Caleb's gonna have to handle it if if he like if he plays like Trevor's played. There's gonna be a lot of vitriol coming his way, and 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 the reality is that he's actually playing pretty well. Yeah, he overcame a big uh, deficit in a playoff game. Stephen Weatherford, four ninety nine, Fields and Wilson equals thirteen. Sign that. Oh, I get it. So. One plus twelve equals thirteen is a sign that Chicago's going Williams. Is Caleb going to wear number thirteen? No, yes. he's number three. What? Number three. So one and three. Oh yeah. Oh, I get it. My bad. Yeah. What am I thinking? It 12? took me a second. Too. Yeah. As I was saying that, I was like, I don't think that's Russell's number. Also, I should know that, being the badger I am. Yeah. Uh, Crystal. Back, I hope everything's good with Crystal in the last 24 hours. 499, we stay in Chicago, Hogue. Yeah, Hogue. There are smarter people to figure the politics out. Yeah, Hogue. Arlington is far. Yeah, Hogue. Hashtag Team Chicago. Hashtag I need car ideas. Well, you should check out our friends at Ray Chevrolet, Fox Lake, Crystal, Ray CDJR. We'll, we'll get you out there. Let's, let's go. Ray to, CDJR has. I mean, if you're getting, I, hopefully you're getting a nice check for the uh, car. And by the way, if you actually did want to check out Ray CDJR, you can you literally could take the Metra out there and it drops you right there. Yeah, but if she takes the Metra Fox Lake, she can't complain about that, taking it to Arlington Heights. That's the yes, rule. she can because she, that would be a one time thing. And Crystal does not. Crystal you can though, Crystal. My dad does it all the time. He lives in Fox Lake. He comes in for White Sox games. Um, further proof that it's not that big of a deal. Hit us up on the old Twitter world if you want to do it. Uh, Get you set up with Ray. He wants to take care of you. I know. I can feel it. Hey, nine ninety nine from Guy Finley. Travel safe. The pantry for breakfast. Tommy's for lunch. Both USC haunts. Give us thoughts on Rice Lloyd in Washington. He just gave you lunch and dinner, dude. Guy Finley's the man. Uh, man, I wish I had that much time. This is a quick in and out trip. Lunch won't be happening. I might. I'm, okay, I'll look it up. I'll look it up, guy, because maybe some breakfast can happen early in the morning. Nine ninety nine. You and Nick for breakfast, or are you by yourself? Well, Nick's taking a private jet at like eight in the morning or six in the morning. I don't know what he's doing. The pantry, California. The White Hen Pantry. Under um, bring it, guy. Back. I promise, though, there'll be more than just Caleb. I mean, obviously, Caleb's the big deal but well there will i'm part of the reason why i want to go is because of rice lloyd in washington there's there's other players other prospects uh brags in the stands let the record show that i wasn't on today and the show still went an hour and a half hashtag i'm not the problem um but steven would you like to uh discuss um how much more efficient our pre-show meeting was this morning i, I will say it was pretty smooth we got the a and b block planned out in about five minutes we had time to shoot us tavern style, and I did make all the graphics with time to spare for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we we shot an entire 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 tavern style before the show. Think about how impossible that sounds. Any other day of the week, Greg. Listen, um, Greg knows that he's the problem, and that's why he's bringing it up. And and <laughs> and Greg's not going to change, and we know this too. So he's just going to remain the problem because he is a problem, and. Now the problem is ours. I mean, I think that's why Taylor Swift wrote that song. Bregs did make a good point, though. He said that we forgot to tell everyone where they could get tickets to the draft party. So I'm just going to show you guys right now They're on the screen. They're not idiots, Greg. We're going to go to allchgo.com. We're going to click this little tab here. Go to events. You'll, you could see how many of them we have coming up. You're going to scroll down past the Blackhawks takeover. Get to go to that, too. White Sox opening day, Cubs opening day. And here we find the CHGO Bears draft party. At Joe's on Weed Street, presented by Circa and Casa Azul, and you could pick whichever tickets you want. You have Thursday and Friday. The Friday, we're going to have Gary Fensick there to do autographs as well and pictures. It's Happy Brex. Is that good? It's a, yes. It's going to be a great time. It's all there. All CSGO.com slash events. Um, I hope, uh, hopefully, we sold those last two Hawks I bet we did. I bet tickets. we did. Pantry uh, opens at 7 a.m. for you, Hogue. The original Pantry Cafe looks delicious. Where is it at? Anywhere near LAX or USC? It's at 877 South Figueroa Street. Los oh, Angeles I know exactly Central. where that is, yeah. 
a guy gives me an address. You think that I know where it is? How would I? How would I? How would Do I? You just, have a map? A map. You think I'm going to map this out and tell you what corner it's at? Click on the address. It usually takes you to a map on your phone. What kind of phone do you have? Uh, listen, listen, listen. A BlackBerry from L 1992? L listen, 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 mansion style. Uh, <laughs> you, your question was ridiculous. I'm not going to be able to map <laughs> you out where you need to go right now. And you can try to do whatever you do to prove that you would do that better than I would in, in, in this brief period of time but i found you I do you want to think the diehards or not i told you that it's open at 7 a.m so be happy with that yes of course i want to thank our diehards because they're the greatest and i appreciate it and we appreciate it and become a diehard by going to all chgo.com where you get all the things and our thing that we're most excited about that we're working on right now outside of the discounts on merch and our tailgates and our events and all that stuff uh the, the big board 100 that we're working on that Nick is not uh, sitting on the show today because he's putting in all the draft knowledge, which is beautiful. Uh, but our new high diehards for today, it's also a great way just to support the show if you're enjoying it. New diehards, Joseph, my guy, sweet jumper from the corner and up top. Joseph can bury it down. What about our guy, Salvador? Who do you want to bring in in the ninth inning for the save? You're bringing in Salvador. Dude can paint the corner. I thought you were going to go like catcher. No. No, Perez. no. Uh, and then our guy, Jamil, one of a kind. Not only is he huge with his family, he's huge with his friends. My guy, Jamil. Michael, yesterday we got to championship number three. Now we're going for Father's Day. Michael coming through, fadeaway jumper. And even this Michael, I feel like he could go up and he under. One six. Michael. Well, but we had three Michaels yesterday. This is the fourth. Oh, okay. I'll get you to five. But okay. uh, look, Michael took down Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, and the Sonics. And our guy, Danny. What can you say about Danny? Uh, not only is he dynamic, not only is he delirious, not only is he not dysfunctional, he is diabolic. He is Danny, and he is our latest diehard. And we thank him for being a part of CHGO. I just got a rap sheet tweet that says your guy, Al Harris, just pr got promoted to assistant head coach slash defensive backs for the Cowboys. That's big. Yeah. You're not talking about my guy, Al Harris, who will be on the show soon that Hoag's very excited about. Yeah. Oh, it's a different Al Harris? Because he's a former Bear, and you appreciate former Bears. I, I just thought you wanted to know this. Uh-huh. Al Harris got promoted. Thank you. Assistant head coach. Your guy, Al Harris, is a great interview. Did you, I, you did one with him a couple just, weeks just ago. Travel safe. Have a great time. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're done I'll, with I'll see, I'll, I'll see you. I'm headed to the airport. I'm going to L.A. We'll be there tomorrow. Again, just a reminder, we're looking at like 2 o'clock-ish tomorrow for the show. we got to be a little bit fluid. Depends on when Caleb talks and all that. Um, it might be a little bit later, but it's not a normal noon show tomorrow. We want to make sure we have the best coverage for you possible from USC's Pro Day. And then Thursday, showtime's at 9.30. So next two days, showtimes are going to be a little bit wonky. Uh, we like to keep it consistent, but definitely when the time calls for it, we move it around a little bit. 9.30, come see us in Waukegan, Circus Sports. We'll be having a live Bears show, CHGO Bears, followed by uh, a College Hoops show and watch party Immediately following that, we're going to have a lot of fun on Thursday. Come join us. For now, we'll talk to you tomorrow after Caleb Williams Pro Day. Like the mayor.